Let's change topic for a while. These sailor knots are not knotted. The knots can escape from the string ends. To capture the knot, we have to glue the string ends together. Now, these are knots. Closing the end of the objects on the right, we get more complex knots, where two components can be linked together. Without originality, we call these object links. If we can untie them, we obtain a very simple link, called unlink. From now on, we will say knots, referring to both knots and links. Look at this knot. If we take its mirror image, it looks different. But we can deform the knot on the left into the one on the right without cutting the string. Then, we will consider them the same knot, even if they look different at first. These two knots look different too, but they are tied in the same manner, in some sense. They have different shapes, but represent the same knot. One can be deformed into the other, without ever cutting the strings. This knot is called trefoil. As before, we can ask, is the trefoil the same as its mirror image? In fact, this is a very technical and difficult problem. Actually, the two knots are not the same. They are called left-hand and right-hand trefoil. How can we distinguish different knots or recognize different drawings of the same knot? A way to approach such a problem is to relate the realm of knots, closed strings, to that of braids. It is easy to see that when we have a braid, we can tie the strand ends together and we can cross the bridge to the realm of knots. And vice versa? Can we cross the bridge in the other direction? A theorem of Alexander ensure that it is possible and gives an algorithm to do it. We describe it even if more efficient ones are known. We choose an axis. We will make a reel around it. We choose a starting point and walk along the knot turning clockwise around the axis. At some time, the knot can turn, and we will be walking anticlockwise. We color all the anticlockwise pieces red. Now, we move each red piece in turn to the other side of the axis, and color them yellow again. In the end, we have turned our knot into a reel around the axis. Walking along the knot, we will always be going in the same sense around the axis. We take a half plane with the axis as border and cut the knot along it. We open the strands, keeping the end points fixed on the half planes. The strings can never touch each other. 
and here is our braid. When we close it, we get a knot equivalent to the original one. That is, we can deform one into the other without cutting the string. Why make life so difficult? The knot on the left seems simpler. But in this way, we can exploit the group structure that we know on braids. Alexander's theorem ensures that we can obtain any knot as the closure of a braid, but two braids can be very different and still give the same knot. For example, they don't even need to have the same number of strands. So the question now is, given two arbitrary braids, do they give the same knot once they are closed? We introduce a new operation called conjugation. Choose a braid. Take another one and its inverse and compose them in this manner, one on the left and the inverse on the right. The new braid is called a conjugate of the first. Note that the corresponding operation with numbers will not change the starting number, the product is commutative. On the contrary, two braids can be different and still be conjugate. Here is a simpler example. Two generators of the braid group are surely different braids, but look, they are conjugate. In general, understand whether two given braids are conjugate is an intriguing issue. Let's go back to our problem. When do two braids close to the same knot? If we conjugate a braid with any other, when we close the new braid, we can shift the lateral pieces. so that they cancel out, since one is the inverse of the other. In this way, we get the same knot as closing the original braid. We can modify our braid in another way. Add a strand on the top and link the two top strands together. The new braid, when closed, will give the same knot as the old one. We just need to undo the loop. Of course, we can do vice versa too. Cancel the last strand if it links just once with the second to last. These operations are called stabilizations. A Russian mathematician, Markov, noticed that two braids give the same knot if and only if they are related by a sequence of moves of the two kinds we have just seen. This is now known as Markov's theorem, even if the first proof is probably due to one of his students. We didn't show the difficult part of this theorem, namely that the two kinds of moves are enough. We just make an example. We already know that these two braids give the same knot. Now we can prove this without passing through the realm of knots. We have to find a sequence of conjugations and stabilizations that transforms one braid into the other. Markov's theorem exactly says when two braids give the same knot, 
but in this form it is of no concrete use. Finding a sequence of relations can be very difficult. And, as in chapter 2, if we can't find such a sequence, it doesn't mean that none exists. Approaching knots through braids seems not to simplify things. But one of the major results on knots was achieved just thanks to the braids. In 1984, Jones, studying braids, proved an outstanding result that revolutionized the theory of knots. It was so important that he won the Fields Medal for it, the most important award for mathematicians. Jones found a way to associate a formula, a mathematical expression, to each braid. The powerful fact is that this permits us to distinguish the knots obtained closing the braids. If two braids have different formulas, then they give different knots. On the other hand, if two braids differ by mark of moves, then they are associated to the same formula. This means that the formula, called Jones polynomial, only depends on the knot, and not on the braid used to get it. As an example, the trefoil and the figure 8 knot have different Jones polynomial, so they are surely different knots. Another algorithm to calculate the Jones polynomial was discovered, not involving braids anymore. Choose a direction to walk along the knot. There are places where we see a crossing. The crossings can be of two types, depending on the strand that passes behind the other. Resolving a crossing means to break the arcs and connect them in the other way, respecting their orientation. Introduce a relation between these pieces. The symbol V indicates the Jones polynomial. Now associate the polynomial 1 to the unknot. Using just these two relations, we can calculate the polynomial on every knot. Choose a crossing and apply the first relation to it. Simplify and apply the first relation again to the knot on the right to write a new equation. Choose a new crossing and go on like this, writing equations and simplifying. Using always the same relations, we can calculate the Jones polynomial of the simplest knots. Then, going back step by step, we can reconstruct the expression for the complex knots, in our case, the right trefoil. We didn't check that this machinery is coherent, that is, making different choices always gives the same expression for a fixed knot. This is the difficult part and the interesting one. The Jones polynomial is an invariant of knots. Calculated on two equivalent knots, it is the same. If we calculate the Jones polynomial on the left trefoil, we obtain an expression that is symmetric to the other, in some sense but not equal. We have proved that the two trifles are not equivalent.